I like to think of the internet sometimes as both the place where horrible ideas come alive and are mercilessly obliterated seconds later once Twitter gets a hold of it. And, you know, let's give credit where credit is due. Every now and again, some great ideas come out of the internet. I remember seeing a video one day of uh, some guys that basically put a drone or some kind of remote controlled aircraft of some kind inside of a lawnmower. So a bunch of animated gifs of that, and I assume that is not some kind of digital fakery, like they actually did this. This is the kind of thing that internet people just do. Like, actually, I can make this into this thing and, you know, get some clicks on Reddit or whatever. So every now and again, there's these good ideas, but sometimes it just goes horribly off the rails. And the reasons for this are so plentiful. There are too many to even count here on this video, but in this case, from looking at what happened, I'm going to say lack of familiarity with the way the internet responds to you not taking a joke. And, and that's what the video, that's what today's video is about. I'm not gonna talk about portable emulation or video games or whatever. I wanna talk about something that's happening locally here in Calgary, but it's so funny. It's brought me so much entertainment and joy that I figured, like, you guys deserve to know this too. For those who don't know, I live in Calgary, Alberta. That's Canada, by the way. And we have a amusement park of sorts here in town. Well, rather, it's not exactly in town. It's like four kilometers out of town. It's called Callaway Park. And the reason I say an amusement park of sorts is that it's not, you know, a big... Like, don't think Disney. It's more like... In the spectrum of amusement parks, you have something like, say, Disney, like, you know, premier, you know, top tier amusement parks. And you have like a carnival. And Kelly Park is like, it's not a carnival. It's a little more sophisticated than a carnival, let's say. But it's not on par with like big name amusement parks, right? Which is understandable because it is, you know, Calgary is not the biggest city in Canada and our winters are pretty harsh. So it doesn't make sense to build something like a Disney level amusement park in a place where our summers last about like, you know, two to three minutes. So I understand why this is. And I, I've been to Callaway Park once and you know, I thought it was okay. And I was actually kind of looking forward to going again with my friends because you know, we can finally get together again. So I'm looking for every opportunity I have to get out and meet with friends. So I was actually looking forward to going to Calway Park now that since, you know, summer is in full swing. However, not everybody shares my enthusiasm. Me, Kellum. Kellum is a local social media influencer. I'm not super familiar with what he does. I've seen his stuff floating around, but I follow so many people, it's hard to keep track. And unless you're creating something that is on my radar, like, you know, technology or movie news, things like that, I take my time to actually like getting around to figuring out what people do. Right, but he seems like a, this is the first time that I actually paid attention to what he creates. And my first impression from his content is he's a funny guy because he made a TikTok blasting Callaway Park due to what he considers high ticket prices. This is what he had to say. Can anyone tell me why the Callaway Park admission price costs $2 more than Canada's Wonderland? For those who don't know the difference, this is Callaway Park. Pretty accurate picture. 30 rides, like 100 acres. This is Canada's Wonderland. It's the country's premier amusement park with more than 200 attractions. The biggest roller coasters in Canada are at this park. Now, this wasn't the only TikTok he created. That first one got some decent hits on his page and a lot of discussions in the comments, so he did a follow-up where he was perhaps a little bit more incisive. I've never heard of Callaway Park. Well, that's probably a good thing. Callaway Park is a very small amusement park in Calgary, Alberta. It's the worst amusement park I've ever been to, for sure. There's a roller coaster. One roller coaster. The Drop of Doom, which is like 20 feet tall. Now, right off the bat, I think I know what some of you might say. Like, there's always devil's advocates. And I get it, sometimes you guys have decent points. So I can already see, and I think I actually saw some comments saying this, that, you know, it's kind of gauche. She's trashing a local business and 
local businesses have been hit the hardest because of the pandemic. So, you know, perhaps some could see this in poor taste. I get it. I get it. But at the same time, Homeboy does have a point. Why is it so expensive after all? It should be a little cheaper to operate if it's smaller, right? And perhaps Callaway Park has a perfectly reasonable explanation as to why this is. And now that there's so many eyes on the park because his TikTok went viral here locally and really in Canada in general, I saw that there's a lot of numbers there that local creators don't usually pull because Calgary isn't that big. So I'm assuming there's a lot of people who saw this and thought it was funny that aren't from Calgary. So Calgary Park, obviously this got back to them and they had a choice on how to deal with this backlash. There's some local influencer talking about the price of admission for our park. Now, it, okay, so here, here is the crossroads moment where Callaway Park, if the people in charge of the amusement park were a little more social media savvy, they could turn this into a positive, probably. Like, I'm, I'm no expert, but I've been around for a while. So if I were their manager, what I would probably do is create a campaign and, you know, welcome the ribbing and the criticism with, you know, in be a good sport about it, basically. I mean, you all remember from like grade five, if somebody gives you a nickname and you get angry about it, you done goof because that's gonna be your name until you graduate. And I guess they skipped that day back in school because they went with the complete opposite route. So Callum posted a comment on Callaway's Instagram asking for free tickets, which I thought was kind of funny. He obviously knew about the backlash. He knew that uh, the company must have seen it and didn't care about it so much. So he, he went for a little extra jab and trying to get free tickets, score some free tickets in the process. You know, can't blame a guy for trying. Callaway Park responded asking Callum to shoot them an email with his phone number because they wanted to get on the phone with him. So dude says, he actually confirmed this to me. He said, I saw some comments where he explained the story and he actually confirmed this to me on the DMs on Instagram. He thought at this point, they're actually gonna give him some free tickets and try to spin this into a positive kind of publicity thing, right? I, I, can, I can picture it. They could like make, you know, crack some jokes about it. And, and I understand obviously rolling with the punches on this one forces you to admit that you're not in the same tier as like these like premier amusement parks, but I don't think anybody's under any illusions that you are competing with Disney World or Canada's Wonderland, right? So by the way, for the non-Canadians, Wonderland is basically our Disney World. It's the number one amusement park in Canada. I understand it's probably the only one of its kind. I don't think it has any competitors. Every other amusement park that you will find in Canada is something more like Calloway Park, a little bit smaller. It's just, Canada is not the country for something like this. There's a reason they build these things in Florida and California and not here. So what Callaway Park did next, like I was, not every company can spin social media backlash into a positive, into a marketing opportunity. I get it. But it's almost like they went, like they, they, they pointed in the wrong direction and they just went full throttle because this is what they did next. Want you to understand there are going to be consequences if you if you continue. So we're giving you the opportunity, Cal. Like consequences being what? I mean, well, and what is it that you're referring to? To your TikTok video, to your continuing of your defamation of uh, Calway going under. <laughs> um, so, so we've got it all documented. Again, Kellen, all we're trying to do right now is just common sense and have some adults in the room um, so that you can make a decision to participate. And we're giving you this as a courtesy call. Who am I, who am I speaking with currently? You're, you're talking to Callaway Park. No, I mean, like you. The No, I, I won't give you my name. So at this point, you can choose to, um, you know, let us know if you want to proceed or if you, you know, it's up to you, Callum. We're giving you this opportunity. Yes. They called Callum to scare him with a legal threat. They said that he committed defamation against the park by calling it crappy and saying the tickets are too expensive. Now, I'm no lawyer. 
think it's grounds to sue somebody. And perhaps that's why they didn't actually say they were going to sue him. Now, despite not being a lawyer, I've been around the block a little bit when it comes to, you know, saying things on the internet that some companies don't like that much. And if my experience serves me, the wording on that phone call almost makes me think that they were trying to scare him with legal sounding words without actually saying for sure they're going to sue him. Because here's the thing, when somebody wants to sue you, they typically don't want to talk to you that much. If they have grounds, they just want to go in and do this thing and contact their lawyer, file a statement of claim, and then just serve you with the papers to take you to court to actually force you to issue a retraction or if they want to get some legal remedy in the form of getting some money out of you because of the defamatory statements. This is how this, this is how the dance goes. These companies don't hit up the presumed defendant and try to scare them, not, not even their actual legal representation, the manager of the place itself, I assume, because I don't know if you caught that, but when Kellen asked the guy who he was talking to, the guy didn't want to give his name. And that's not a good sign, not at all. For those wondering, because I'm sure I'm gonna get comments like this, Canada is a one party consent state, meaning if you're part of the conversation, the phone call, you can actually record that phone call without letting the other person know. Not every country is like this, not every state in the United States is like this, but in Canada, what he did is not illegal. The reason I say this is because I wouldn't be surprised if Callaway Park calls him again to try to further intimidate him by saying, hey, you recorded our phone call without our consent. That's another however much money they are, would presumably ask. I can't get past the fact that he asked the guy straight up, who am I dealing with? What is your name? And the guy didn't want to say his name. Like, you know what does that? Calls people out of the blue and intimidates them and doesn't want to identify themselves. It's like, it's like mafia shit. Like, it's not professional at all. I'm... <laughs> and then of course, now comes the real backlash because some influencer talking shit about your park is, you know, I get it uncomfortable but that phone call trying to intimidate them into i presume deleting the tiktoks and the instagram reel that's like way worse way worse than the overpriced tickets so now local tourism pages are putting the park on blast and just broadcasting the story even louder which reminds me of the Streisand effect. So back in the 90s, Barbara Streisand had this big ass mansion and some publication got a bunch of pictures and she was gonna sue the publication for having these pictures for putting this out. But the problem is by suing the, the, the people responsible for the story, for the pictures, the pictures became far more visible because you attracted way more attention because guess what? You're Barbara f***ing Streisand. The moral of the story is that if you believe you're in the right, it's better not to draw attention to something that people are saying about you that is unfair. Like, as I think anybody who's a social media personality is somewhat acquainted with this notion. But obviously, whoever called Callum, uh, oh man, it's just so bad. And I, again, I feel bad because ultimately what's going to happen is that the park is gonna get bad publicity, people are not gonna go to the park, and. Obviously the people in charge, the people who called Calm are going to, to, to face some repercussion for their poor decision making, but ultimately their employees are also gonna suffer from this. So there's no perfect solution, unfortunately. It is a funny story though, it, it's, it's pretty funny. I hope they learn their lesson. I have a feeling they won't. I don't really know the people on the other side of that phone call, but they sounded, I'm gonna say a little stubborn and perhaps uh, a little too full of, of themselves and these people usually don't learn lessons when there's a bunch of people on the internet saying, hey, you know, you screwed up. And to their credit, the angry mob in Canadian fashion are not being as angry as you usually see from these things. They're being pretty civil, just communicating that this is disappointing and they're not going to patronize the park this summer. You guys done goofed is what I'm trying to say. This is a long-winded way to say, you guys done goofed. You could have you could have asked me, hey Izzy, what do we do? These guys are talking shit about us on the internet. People talk talk shit about me on the internet all the time, and I can handle it pretty okay. I haven't called people threatening to sue them for stupid reasons yet. So I like to think I could have helped you uh, with that situation, or, or anybody that's been around the internet for more than five minutes and has seen these things play out before. But what do you think? Are you on the side of the influencer Callum 
for just making a joke and then just spinning this into a, an even funnier situation? Are you on the side of people who think that maybe it wasn't poor taste to be trashing, you know, a local establishment like this that obviously could use the extra foot traffic now that the we were out of the quarantine period? Or are you in here just for the laughs, which is kind of my case. It's a bit of a nihilistic take on the whole situation. I just think it's hilarious. And Callum seems like a funny guy. And you know, it's even, I think here's, here's the interesting thing. In responding to people and just commenting about this and joking about the situation and dunking on Calway Park a little bit and sharing past experiences of, you know, going to park and not being very impressed by the installations and things like that. Even the, the history of the park itself has been brought up into the fray. Apparently it was a Flintstones themed theme park when it first opened or something and then they reverted back. I don't know why exactly. Kind of curious. I'm going to check it out. Probably should have done research on that before the video, but that's pointless. What I'm trying to say is that I ended up making some friends <laughs> in the midst of all of this. Some people follow me because I was making some, some jokes. I followed some people back and in the end, the real Calloway Park was the friends we made along the way. That's the perfect way to end this video, but let me know in the comments how you feel about this whole situation. And again, this is outside of the purview of the usual videos I make here on this channel, but I just wanted to share this with you because it brought me so much joy and I, I felt like you could use that today. Anyway, if you like this video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, hit the notification bell because YouTube sucks at letting you know I put new videos out here. Follow me on social media. I'm very active over there, both Twitter and Instagram, always sharing behind the scenes stuff and you know, stuff like, Video game shit. I know, and I know this is what you're in here for, right? Like this is what you came for. It's it's all there. It's all on my Insta. Just, just go check it out. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy, and I'm done. Peace out.